All right, I want to talk to you about the triangle of evil. I was going to do a little put up a paper or something like this and have it there, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to show what I drew out here in my notes. The triangle of evil. Right there you have fornication and adultery, money being the root of all evil, and the soul over there. I'm going to show you some inter interesting scripture tie-ins that use these exact words um, and how you can... Uh, get involved in that evil if you want to make lots of money. If you saw last study that I did about the thing of the hurtful and foolish lusts and, and whatnot of get, becoming rich, um, I'm going to go over some interesting stuff here. Of course we have to go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Everything is all about money nowadays, brethren. Uh, inflation and the interest rate hikes and uh, what are we going to do about the new world reserve currency? And China's rush, working on one and Russia's working on one. And, and uh, we're sending billions of dollars over to this. And we're, we're having a problem. We're going to have to probably do some more stimulus checks. And Americans are barely able to pay for bills anymore. And it, money, 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 money. First Timothy chapter 6, beginning in verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, here's your key word, flee. Flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Flee. Hmm. Is there something that we're supposed to flee in the Bible? What would be another tie into that word flee? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18. Turn there. The Bible says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. We are to flee fornication. Okay? Um, what about this word fornication? Is there a tie-in uh, monetarily to that whole thing? Yes, there is. Revelation chapter 17. The word of God interprets itself. Thou, a man of God, flee these things. Flee fornication. Revelation 17, verses 1 through 6. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Hmm. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Since when do you get wine from fornication? You're just talking about a man and woman together, you know, having sex, quote unquote. How does wine come from that? It's not talking about just regular physical sex here. It's talking about fornication in the sense of money, trade. We'll see about that here in a little bit. Verse 3, So he carried me away in the spirit into the, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-collared beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in and purple and scarlet collar, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Huh. So the fornication there is connected to Gold and precious stones and pearls. Hmm. Wine in the golden cup that's in her hand. Of course, if you any, understand anything about Scripture here, it's talking about the Roman Catholic Church. That's what this whole passage is about. Verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. No other system in history could fulfill that but the Roman Catholic Church. Nobody else ever killed Christians on the level that the Catholic Church has. 
She's drunken with the blood of the martyrs and saints of Jesus. All right? Don't ever let anybody come along and say that it's America or Islam or some other kind of nonsense. No, it's Mystery Babylon. And you can look at verse 18 of that same chapter. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Show me another city where kings and presidents and prime ministers and whatever else, they're going and they're bowing down and kissing the ring or whatever else, going to visit with the leader of it. Yeah, it's Roman Catholicism. But again there we see a little bit of a definition of that word fornication. So, 1 Timothy chapter 6, Thou, O man of God, flee these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, flee fornication. Revelation chapter 17, fornication is being committed between the city and the rulers of the world and the people are benefiting from that fornication. Hmm. Triangle of evil. Revelation chapter 2. You say, well, how's, how does adultery come into this whole thing? There's another dis definition of this woman back in Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 through 22. He's talking here to the church in Thyatira. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. There's your fornication. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. So you see, fornication and adultery are used interchangeably in this passage. It doesn't mean that fornication and adultery are the same thing. Fornication is something that single people can do. Adultery is something that married people do. If I'm married, if I go out and I cheat on my wife, that's adultery. But it's also, what is that adultery? It's, well, it's an act of fornication. Any sex outside of marriage is fornication. But if you're married, then it's also called adultery. Understanding the difference there. All right? So you have adultery with this woman and fornication. Hmm. Second Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12 through 14. says here, But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. What is the reward of unrighteousness? Well, I don't know. The wages of sin is death. The reward of unrighteousness. Hmm. As they that count it uh, pleasure to ride in the daytime, spots are they and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, hmm, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Eyes full of adultery, and what's it lead to? A heart they have exercised with covetous practices. By whatever your heart desire is, your heart's desire. Eyes full of adultery. Hmm. You know, it's kind of an interesting thing when you think about it. Most stores, stores that you go to, a lot of them, people go in there with eyes full of adultery. They go in there and they look at the, the slave labor and they look at all this other stuff, these, the big uh, materialistic, big industry produces. Eyes full of adultery. What does my heart want? The covetous practices. Hey, how much of that stuff do you actually need at this store? Oh, very little, but you know. I've worked hard. I deserve it. I want to go out here and I buy this and I buy that. Mm -hmm. Flee that stuff. Interesting. Proverbs chapter 6. See, well, it's not a big deal if I get a few things here and there. You know, I mean, come on. It's not a huge deal if I just go on a shopping spree once in a while and just shop till I drop and the whole deal. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. You say, oh, oh, you legalistic, just 
So now if I go shopping, I'm destroying my soul, apparently. <sighs> Give me a break. Oh, first of all, I didn't say shopping. All right, I'm talking about having eyes full of adultery, a heart that's exercised with covetous practices, and that is going to lead to the destruction of your soul. You say, oh, this is ridiculous. You can't prove this. Luke chapter 12. I will show you. I'll show you what's wrong with most of the people. People just driving blissfully by and like nothing is wrong. Everything's fine. The economy's never been better, you know. The, the, I remember seeing the, the whole thing during the Trump regime, the Trump pageant, and it was all, you know, best economy ever and all this other stuff. It's nonsense. Yeah, that's why you have to continually print money, you know, the quantitative easing thing. People are insane. Luke chapter 12, verse 16 I'll see here. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. Build back better? Hmm, nothing to it. Build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. <laughs> and I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Like a lot of people think right now, they think that there's nothing wrong with the economy. We don't really have, you know, we're not in a recession here in America. Yeah, we have the two quarters of negative, you know, growth in the economy. But that used to be in recession, but it doesn't anymore. We've changed the rules, you know. <laughs> Everything's looking great for the future. We have investments. We have all kinds of stuff. Where I'm standing right here, I've shared this in one of the other studies, but there's Wolfton Mining. It has an office in the old pharmacy building right down there across the road. Hey, we're going to bring millions of dollars into the area. And they're, they're already, you know, giving money to the, to the uh, harlots that run the, you know, the, the people, the town people and whatever else here. They're, you know, giving money. They're, they just paved the road here. and We're putting a big solar farm thing up this way. And nobody really knows where the money's coming from. And, the, and yeah. I'm sure. Uh, Wolfton's going to do some nice things for the people in the area, don't you see? And they're going to make millions of dollars, you know, so that they can, or, you know, they're going to make millions of dollars by totally destroying the area, turning it into a mining wasteland, you know, and just driving more people off of their land like they did in Burkina Faso with Orzone, which was the former company that Ron Little owned. Before he has Wolfton, he's the president of Orzone. Again, I proved all this stuff in videos. And um, probably eventually they'll sell the place to China, the whole area up here. Beautiful, uh, clean water and everything else, wilderness area. And they'll just sell it to China and China can come in and have their open pit mines and everything. And everything's going to be great. 20, 20 years from now, we'll be doing open pit mining. Everything's going to be wonderful. These people have no concept, no concept at all. Like the guy in verse 19, the rich man. Verse 20, but God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Hmm. You're to flee the love of money. You're to flee fornication. Fornication happens with the Vatican and all the little secret societies, fraternal things, correct connections, and all the right investment groups, and all the, the money behind my business here, and all the right people, and all the... Uh-huh. It's adultery. Eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. You come up here and you go, Oh, I wonder what kind of metals are in these mountains up here. and I wonder if there's oil. I wonder if there's natural gas. And Oh! You're a sick pervert, is what you are a fornicating sick pervert, and someday you'll lose your soul over it. Is it worth it? Anything's worth it. <laughs> Revelation 18. Mystery Babylon likes to deal in souls. She likes money. We'll show you that here. Revelation 18, verse 1 through 13. 
And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. Flee, fornication in other words, you know, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Wages of sin is death. They're going to get even more. Uh, their death is going to be much worse, in other words, is what I'm saying. And double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. <laughs> yeah, kind of like the one that just passed away there in England. That wicked uh, queen, false queen that she was. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat. Interesting, there's a big wheat shortage right now. And beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. What do they say? You want to make a lot of money? They'd say, boy, I'd sell my soul to make lots of money? Hmm. You want to be wealthy? You have to sell your soul. In more ways than one. <laughs> hmm. Mark chapter 8. The book of Mark chapter 8. It's amazing how things tie together. You don't even have to do a word study on the same exact word. You just go through and you see the tie-ins and it all just like a path. I believe, honestly, brethren, this might sound really weird, but if you want a picture of eternity, it's this book right here. The cross references. That one goes over to this verse. That verse relates to that verse. This one here goes to this one. And you can just spend all your time just going words that word, oh, that reminds me of that verse there, yeah. And this one here, oh, that, that's describing this verse that happened back here in the Old Testament. And it's weird because when you read that verse in the Old Testament, it reminds me of what it says in Proverbs. And that verse in Proverbs is very similar to what Jesus said. And then and it just goes on and on. There's no end to the cross-references of this amazing book. Mark chapter 8, verse 34 And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Don't be ashamed of this book, brethren. Don't be ashamed of the Word of God. This is the most valuable thing on this planet. The King James Bible, the authorized version. Uh, there's nothing more important than this blessed book right here. It is the King it should have the rightful place above all other books down here. All the junk writings of men and the Vatican versions and whatever else out there. 
Um, there's no book greater than the King James Bible. And there's no better way to spend your time than reading this book and listening to the preaching of this word right here. There's nothing more important than that. Not one thing. Um, you know, and without going into a huge amount of examples and whatever else, the formula for uh, getting into any kind of wealthy, powerful position is that triangle right there. I'll show you one more time here now that we're to the end of it. If you want money down here, you have to be willing to sell your soul. And how do you do that? By fornication and adultery with Mystery Babylon and all of her daughters. You have to right, make the right connections. You have to get the right connections with business. You have to get the right connections, connections with the church, with the right societies and fraternities and whatever else. And you get these guys like Joel Osteen and some of these others, Rick Warren and these guys, you know. And they get to the point where they get to be such a big shot with their uh, <clears throat> ministries, they'll end up at the Vatican. Personal audience with the Pope. Yeah, with the whore, the head of the whore. And then you, you're, you know, really on your way then. Uh, Benny Hinn, you know, talked about going to the Pope many times, private audience with the Pope and all this stuff. <laughs> um, my suggestion is that you flee it. Run away from it. Um, be thankful for what God has given you. All right? Um, financial times that are coming are going to be very bad, very trying for a lot of people. But uh, if you have this book... You have something that's far more valuable and far more powerful than uh, all the money in the world. A lot of people are going to lose everything. They will. Um, don't offer them finances. Okay? Offer them the Word of God because that's what's going to help people in the future. So that is going to be it. I do hope that you do not waste your time on foolish things of this world. Um, there's no better way to spend your time than in this King James Bible. So we will see you in upcoming studies. Thank you very much for watching.